Today is the Human Defense Force. The normal human in a universe full of giant monstrosities and mechanical terrors. The faction that's famous for its heavy vehicles and its many squads of dudes with laser rifles. So before we get into the army list, today our 3D sculptor focus is going to be on Red Makers. If you're looking to make a Human Defense Force army, Red Makers has you covered with many, many different styles of Human Defense Force, depending on what type of planet you are currently defending. I'm not sponsored when I do these 3D creator shoutouts, but this guy has some real quality stuff. If you're printing your own models and you want to do Human Defense Force, check this guy out. So all the models that you see put up on the screen today as I go through the units will be from here. Let's go ahead and jump on in with the special rules. We're going to start off with the character special rules, the ones that they can give to any unit they're a part of. This way you can see that characters are going to mean a whole lot to this army. And we start off with battle drills. This model and its unit get furious. If they already had furious, they get extra hits on unmodified rolls of five to six instead. Double time. Once per activation before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within 12, which may move up to six inches. Hold the line. Whenever this model unit fails a morale test, it takes one wound and the morale test counts as passed instead. Take aim. Once per activation before attacking, pick one friendly unit within 12, which gets plus one to hit next time it shoots. And focus fire. Once per activation before attacking, pick one friendly unit within 12, which gets AP plus one next time it shoots. So all of these character rules are very, very, very impressive. Until you remember, they're just going on basic humans. So the double time, once per activation before attacking, where you can move one of your other units, this is gonna be real good to get your models to where they need to be, either standing on an objective to score victory points, or getting them up and around different pieces of terrain to get the different angles of attack that they need. Hold the line. This is everybody's favorite commissars. You think that you're going to run away. Oh no, everything is terrible. Morale test is failed. We're gonna break and run. Uh-uh. This character puts a gun to someone's head and pulls the trigger and says, turn back around now. And then take aim, giving a unit within 12 plus one to hit is amazing in an army that is based around quality fours and fives. Just the ability to give you that much of a better chance to hit with your massive number of weapons that you're going to be able to fire out of one squad. Coupled with focus fire, a lot of those weapons that you're going to fire are just going to be basic attack weapons, which don't have any AP. Once you start adding AP onto those weapons, things get scary fast. Now, some other special rules to go over. We have protected attacks, targeting units where all models have this rule count as having AP minus one to a minimum of, of AP zero. It's always good to just get that little bump of durability. And then Shield Wall, this model gets plus one to defense rolls against hits that are not from spells. Not very many models in this army carry around shields. I think it's the ogres that carry around the shields that this rule particularly pertains to. So just having those big old slabs of beef walking forward, getting plus one to their defense rolls is going to be great. Then the rest of the special rules are all upgrades that you could put on individual units. The company standard, once per activation, pick two friendly units within 12, which get plus one to their next morale test roll. Always good, again, in an army that is full of quality fours and fives. Medical training, this model and its unit gets regeneration. Always good to have, but not quite so necessary as it was before because a lot of stuff in the game now negates regeneration. And the last one to talk about is the field radio. If this unit has a model with double time, focus fire, or take aim rule, then it may use it on units that have a field radio up to 24 inches away. So that'll be if you have a command squad or a veteran squad or whatever squad that you put your character in, he can call out to other units that have field radios up to two feet away. Just making that character's special rules that much better and being able to reach out that much further to get stuff done. Then we're going to go over to spells. 
Flame Breath 1, target enemy units within 12, takes 2 hits with AP 2. Foresight 1, target friendly unit within 6, gets plus 1 to hit rolls next time it shoots. Expel 2, target enemy unit within 9, takes 1 hit with AP 4 and Deadly 3. Protective Dome 2, target 2 friendly units within 12, they get stealth next time they are shot at. Psychic Speed 3, Target two friendly units within 12, get plus three next time they advance, or plus six next time they rush and charge. And Tempest, three, target enemy unit within 18, takes one hit with blast nine. Now the offensive spells are gonna do what offensive spells do. We're gonna look at the buffing spells because that's where some of the real power comes from. Foresight, the one that gets plus one to hit rolls, coupled with the character rules they get plus one to hit that gives a squad if you want to pour that many resources into it plus two to hit which on a giant block of infantry can make them very deadly or if you absolutely need to make a shot hit giving plus two we'll see that done just thinking about a super heavy tank with plus two to hit on top of all of those guns oh good lord Protective Dome, the one that gives two units within 12 stealth, it's always good because if you're not in a tank in this army, you are squishy. So giving the enemy some minuses to hit is always going to increase your survivability, probably more than the extra defenses we've seen in other armies. The best way to stop a shot from getting through is to stop that shot from hitting you in the first place. And then Psychic Speed, giving two friendly units a plus three, plus six, that's that's going to make them going a little bit faster than a fast unit in case you need to get into or out of a sketchy situation there is that option now we're going to go over to our character units and you can see that they are going to be the linchpin in a lot of your infantry style units and even your armored units they can help them out as well there are only two different characters in this army so what you're going to run into is you're not going to be able to take as many as you actually want because there is, when you're using the competitive rules, a limit to the amount of characters that you can take. At 2,000 points, you're limited to only taking four. You can only duplicate one type of character three times. Doesn't mean you can take six. In competitive, it's only four. So we will start off with the company leader for 40 points. Quality four, defensive five. His only special rules are hero and toughness three when he starts off. One attack with a close combat weapon, two shots with a master rifle at 24 inches. AP nothing. They come pretty much bare bones. You upgrade him with battle drill, double time, hold the line, caster two, take aim, or focus fire. You can see take aim and focus fire actually cost more than the character himself. Just to show you how good those skills are in the army. You replace the master rifle and close combat weapon with a master pistol and close combat weapon. And you can replace that pistol with a drum pistol or a plasma pistol. And you can replace the close combat weapon with an energy sword or energy fist. And you can upgrade him to have stealth, defense plus one, scout, or give him a mount that gives him fast and impact. That's just going to be able to get him to synergize with whatever squad he's put into. Just the way the points costs work out for everything else. You're going to have some extra points to throw around like an extra 25 or 30 chip points you could put wherever you want. Upgrading your characters, depending on what squad you put them in. Like if you put them in a squad of conscripts, who cares? Don't, don't even worry about it. Keep them with the master rifle. But everything else, plasma pistols or energy fists, if you got the points, just go ahead and spend it. You never know where this guy's going to end up. Our second and only remaining character is the Storm Leader for 55 points. Quality 4, defensive 4. Hero, Toughness 3, and he has Strider. One attack with a close combat weapon, two shots with a Master Heavy Rifle at 24 inches with AP 1. You can give him all the same upgrades at the same cost. Battle Drill, Double Time, Hold the Line, Caster 2, Take Aim, and Focus Fire. What this army does not have access to is Caster 3, and with the strength of the spells that we've talked about is a real shame, but is probably part of the balancing act of putting these army books together. You replace the heavy rifle with a heavy pistol. You can replace that pistol with a drum pistol and a plasma pistol. You can do the same energy sword and energy fist. 
But instead of all the other options we had before, you can only give this guy Drop Trooper, which gives him Ambush, which will let him synergize with the Stormtroopers, hence the name Storm Leader. Now we are going to move on to the troop options for the army, and we're going to start with the bottom of the barrel, the guys who are forced to be there, usually through the use of a bomb collar and cattle prods, conscripts. You get 10 of them for 75 points, quality 6, defense of 5, one attack apiece, one shot with a rifle at 24 inches. This unit has no upgrades. They are there to be bullet sponges to absorb all of the enemy's ammo before it gets into your better equipped squads. But my favorite thing to do is to put a company leader with hold the line on this unit. Make it a double size unit for really cheap. At that point, it's only 150 points for 20 bodies. They're quality six, they suck. But with a company leader with hold the line, they're not gonna go anywhere. You have to kill all 21 of those bodies to get them to go away. And you'll see the army that I built leans heavily into that. Next is the infantry squad. I apologize for the small text, but man, these guys got options. 10 of them for 120 points, quality five, defense of five, one attack a piece with a close combat weapon, and one shot with a rifle at 24 inches. You can replace one of the rifles and close combat weapons with a sergeant pistol and hand weapon, making a sergeant for the squad. You can then replace that pistol with a drum pistol or a plasma pistol and then an energy sword and energy fist, kind of like we saw with the characters. You can upgrade two of the models with either a field radio, company standard, or medical training, any combination of those. You could take two of those. If you have a squad that your company leader is in with a field radio, for five points, definitely take a field radio with this squad. That way you're going to be able to spread those orders and abilities out a lot further across the field. You can replace up to two of the rifles with a plasma rifle, drum rifle, fusion rifle, grenade launcher, flamer, or sniper rifle. All relatively cheap compared to what we've seen in the past. Plasma rifle it seems to be the go-to here because it synergizes with the rifle range. And having AP4 buried in this squad, true, you might only hit on a five, and this unit isn't the greatest to put any plus one to hits on, but it's good to have that option. I hate shooting into stuff just to have the enemy pass every single one of their armor saves. It feels like you wasted your shots. And on top of that, you could take one of the rifles and close combat weapons out and replace it with a weapon team. And for the weapon teams, you can give them a mortar for indirect shooting. You can give them a heavy machine gun for more shooting. A missile launcher for some lighter anti-tank, anti-vehicle stuff. It only has AP2. A laser cannon for heavier anti-tank because it's got the AP3. Or you can go with an auto cannon, three shots at AP2. It's pretty much anti-everything. These guys are going to be the backbone of your army, unless you went full armored company. They will be what leads you to victory. Not by killing much, but just by surviving to the end of the game. And speaking of those weapon teams you can do in your infantry squad, you can take them as their own independent thing. Weapon teams, three of them for 130 points, quality five, defensive five, with a toughness of three. Two attacks apiece in close combat, because it's supposed to be two dudes on the weapon. And they come equipped with mortars, which give you one shot at 30 inches with blast three and indirect. So it's some anti-infantry fire from behind cover. And you can replace them just like you could in the infantry squad with either heavy machine gun, missile launcher, last cannon, or auto cannon. As you send your troop squads forward, these guys can sit as like a rear line guard and blast over their head at whatever needs to get taken down at that moment. These would be the good squads to have your characters standing next to to give them all the plus one to hit or plus one AP if you need it. With all the firepower concentrated in the weapon teams, that's going to be a better investment than giving those abilities out to individual squads. Next, we come to veteran squads. These guys have somehow lived through their first or second engagement, so they're seen as veterans. Hey, you've been on the field for more than an hour, you know what you're doing. Veteran squads, five of them for 85 points, quality four, defense of five, one attack apiece with close combat weapons, and still only one shot with rifles at 24 inches. You could do the same thing as the infantry squad. You can make one a sergeant 
with a pistol and a hand weapon, you can upgrade that pistol and you can upgrade the hand weapon. You can also upgrade this unit with the field radio company standard or medical training. You can replace two rifles with a shotgun, a drum rifle, a plasma rifle, or a sniper rifle. You can replace one of the rifles with a flamer, grenade launcher, or a fusion rifle. You can replace one of the rifles with a weapon team. And you can upgrade these guys a multitude of different ways. Seeing as there are veterans, you can upgrade them for plus one defense, stealth, scout, or demo charges, giving them AP4 in melee. These are the guys that run into battle holding like an anti-tank mine outstretched to punch somebody in the face with it. These guys, you can specialize a little bit more in just certain different ways, like five models in the squad. You can do two plasma rifles. That way, if you combine the squad, it could be 10 models with four plasma rifles. Hitting at quality four, that's not too bad. Add in two fusion rifles just for the added utility of taking out some larger targets and adding more AP4 firepower to it, you should be doing pretty good there. Next unit we come to is Stormtroopers. Five of them for 110 points, quality four, defensive four, and they have Strider. One attack a piece in close combat, one shot at 24 inches with their heavy rifles at AP1. You can upgrade one guy to be your sergeant, giving him a heavy pistol and a hand weapon. You can replace that pistol with a drum pistol and a plasma pistol. You can replace the hand weapon with a sword or a fist. And you can give them the typical field radio company standard or medical training. You can replace two of the heavy rifles with a plasma rifle, drum rifle, or a sniper rifle. And you can replace one of the heavy rifles with a flamer, grenade launcher, fusion rifle, or a heavy volley gun. And you can upgrade the unit to give them all ambush. What I like to do is give this unit two plasma rifles, the heavy volley gun, and give them ambush so they can pop up anywhere. And they can throw down with some AP4 and lots of AP1 shots. The only other upgrade that I think is necessary for these guys is a field radio because when you ambush with them, they're going to be so far up a field from your commander that you will need a field radio to get any type of orders out to this squad. And for those people who like special weapons, there's a completely dedicated squad of them. Special weapons, three of them for 65 points, quality five, defensive five, and these guys are relentless. Relentless means if you stand still, if you use a hold action and fire at somebody, if you roll a six to hit, it counts as an additional hit. They come with one attack with a close combat weapon and a grenade launcher, which gives them one attack at 24 inches with a blast of three. You can replace the grenade launcher with a drum rifle, fusion rifle, flamer, or a rapid plasma rifle for two shots at AP4. So of course, you know where I'm going with this, where my mind goes. Take this squad, combine it for six guys, give them all rapid plasma rifles. And if the enemy isn't paying attention, these six guys can get within 24 inches and just hold down the trigger for 12 shots at AP4 and any sixes they get explode into more hits. That's a devastating squad for not that many points. Not that many points for what that squad can do. And again, giving this squad the plus one to hit or plus two to hit if you're able to get a Psyker close enough is definitely going to help them out. Relentless only goes off on an unmodified roll of six, but getting these guys plus one or plus two to hit is going to be incredible for the amount of damage they can do. Then we come to Sniper Squads. 140 points for three dudes, quality five, defensive five. They have scout and stealth. One attack a piece with close combat weapons, and they have a sniper rifle for one shot at AP1 at 30 inches with the sniper rule. The sniper rule means that you're gonna hit on a two. You can pick which model that you hit in a target unit. This is gonna be good for picking out other heavy weapon troops an enemy model that has like medical training that gives the whole squad regeneration, picking them out to take that ability away. Or if you want to be real lucky, you could pick out an embedded character in an enemy squad. Kind of hard to do that because all the heroes start off with toughness three already. So if you take a combined squad, then it's time to start taking shots at that character, banking on him failing more defensive roles that way, just with more shots put into him. And with scout and stealth, they get a 12 inch move before the game starts. You can put them in a position where they're hiding. They're completely blocked by 
line of sight blocking terrain and you can roll them out of cover and fire at whatever you need to on turn number one. Now we come to the Ogre Squad, the big goofy bastards. I love these guys because I feel like I resemble them. You get three Ogres for 195 points, quality four, defensive four, fearless, furious, and toughness three. Three attacks apiece at AP1 with their heavy close combat weapons, and one attack at 18 inches with blast from their mini grenade launchers. You can replace all the mini grenade launchers with a combat shield that gets you the shield wall and an additional one attack from Bash as they just backhand somebody with the shield. Or you can replace the grenade launcher with a heavy submachine gun, 12 inch range, three shots apiece at AP1. And you can replace the heavy close combat weapon with a shock baton for bending or a heavy baton for AP2. This is gonna be your only real tanky infantry in the army and if you want a way to keep a character on the board for as long as possible put him in an ogre squad not only are they tough but if you give them like heavy batons not many things are going to want to charge into close combat with them instead of trying to shoot them off the board and with their toughness three it's kind of hard to do plus i think all the models that are available for the different ogres are all pretty cool anyways must be a family resemblance thing then we come to the last squad that you can get for the army your fast close combat hard hitting hammer unit that doesn't really like taking shots back the cavalry squad five of them for 90 points quality five defensive five fast and impact one they all come equipped with hunting lances with one attack a piece at ap1 with the lance special rule that means when they charge they get ap plus two so when they're charging, all of these turn into AP3 attacks. And they're all equipped with pistols for one shot at 12 inches. You can replace the hunting lances with heavy lances, which remove the lance rule, but give them AP2 all the time. You can replace one of the hunting lances with an energy sword or an anti-tank lance for AP2 and deadly three. And you can replace one of the pistols with a drum rifle, grenade launcher, plasma rifle, flamer, or fusion rifle. Now this is one of those squads that you're going to be able to maneuver it into position and get a charge off once. When you hit an enemy with these guys, with the hunting lances, and they find out that they're AP3, the enemy is going to try to move heaven and earth to get rid of that squad and get them out of their backfield. I wouldn't worry about putting heavy lances on them because since you're fast, you're the one that's probably going to dictate where the charges happen. The anti-tank lance... It's interesting. That might be worth it if you're going to charge into some heavier targets. And replacing the pistol, I wouldn't worry about that because this unit's whole stick is it's going to be charging stuff. You're probably never going to fire any of the ranged weapons. And if you do, you're probably missing a chance to charge something else. And just one more crazy idea with these guys. If you get a Psyker on the board and you cast the spell on these guys to give them plus three plus six that gives them a 19 inch charge into the enemy which means if something moved forward out of their deployment zone you could probably smash into them with these guys just a thought my orc brain is itching at that idea now we're going to move into tanks start off with the baby tanks the light apc 215 points quality four defensive two fast impact six toughness six and transport 11 Comes out of the factory with two heavy flamers, one shot a piece at 12 inches with AP1, blast three, and reliable. I don't think I've said it yet, but reliable means that you always hit on a two. You can replace those two heavy flamers with a heavy machine gun for more shots at longer range. You can replace one of the heavy flamers with a laser machine gun for three shots at AP3. You can upgrade it with a pintle machine gun for even more DACA. You can give it a dozer blade for strider camouflage netting for stealth and you can give it a hunter missile one shot at 24 inches ap2 deadly three locked on and limited which means you only get to fire it once per game so moving around your infantry you can keep it cheap just to use that to transport your infantry keeping them inside of a metal box until it is time for them to spill out and do work or you can spend a few points into it that laser machine gun three shots at ap3 that's a real nice upgrade. You're gonna be able to do some chip damage with an APC that your enemy probably didn't think you were gonna be able to do. So if you're doing an armored company or a mechanized company, 
These are going to be great to move around whatever troops you have. Next, we come to the armored truck, the Hilux of Grimdark Future. 200 points, quality 4, defensive 2, fast, impact 6, strider, and toughness 6. Comes with a twin volley gun for 4 shots at AP 1, 24 inch range, and a light Gatling gun, 4 shots at 18 inches. You can replace the twin volley gun for a light auto cannon for 4 shots at AP 2, and you can replace the light Gatling gun with a storm rifle, a light battle cannon, or a Taurus missile. And then you can upgrade it to give it transport of six. And let me put the little nugget in your head that a combined special weapon squad happens to be six models. Just putting that out there. So again, you can keep this real cheap just to put an armored vehicle on the board. It's shooting. Well, it isn't great. It isn't pathetic. And if you upgrade it with the twin light auto cannon, it actually becomes pretty good. Especially at that point, it's only a 225 point model. And if you want to throw any of the other weapons on there, your point cost goes up a little bit more, but your shooting just gets better with each of them. What I would personally build if I was doing the armor truck is I would take the twin light auto cannons and a storm rifle. It gives all the weapons AP1 with enough range to stay out of trouble, just to poke your nose out and cause some damage in spots the enemy probably wasn't anticipating it. Next, we come to the attack vehicle. This has all the oddball weapons where they didn't quite want to call it a tank yet. 250 points, quality 4, defensive 2, fast, impact 6, and toughness 9. Comes equipped with a heavy flamer, one shot at 12 inches with blast 3 reliable on AP1, and an acid cannon for 6 shots at 18 inches with poison. You can give it the dozer blade for strider and a netting for stealth. You can give it one of those hunter missiles for a one-shot anti-tank missile. You can replace the acid cannon with a fusion cannon to give it anti-tank for one shot at AP4 and deadly six, or a rapid flamer cannon, two shots, AP1, blast three, and reliable. And then you can replace the heavy flamer with a heavy fusion rifle or a heavy machine gun. So it looks like this is gonna be able to be outfitted three different ways, or at least that's what it's telling me. You're gonna be able to do blast, anti-infantry, multiple shot anti-infantry, or anti-tank. The first one is where you keep the heavy flamer and you give it the rapid flamer cannon. That's going to be used to clear out a bunch of stuff. All the weapons have blast and reliable, so you're hitting out of two. You can give it the heavy machine gun and keep the acid cannon. That way you're throwing more shots downfield. Or you can go for the fusion cannon and the heavy fusion rifle to really pump up the anti-tank ability of this vehicle. This is one of those vehicles where you outfit it for what you need that 360 day. points, now quality in four, stuff defense that everyone two, is here for. fast, impact six, and toughness 12. Starts off with a Nova cannon, one shot at 36 inches with AP1 and blast six, and a twin heavy flamer. Two shots at 12 inches with AP1, Blast 3, and Reliable. Now, for your main gun, you can replace it with a Gatling Cannon for anti-infantry work, an anti-tank cannon for anti-tank work, a Battle Cannon for blasting anti-infantry work with AP2. They could deal with some heavier stuff. Heavy Plasma Cannon for blasting truly heavy stuff, AP4 and Blast of 6. The heavy auto cannon is kind of an in-between weapon that gets you a lot of shots at AP2. And the siege cannon, two shots, Blast 3, AP3, and indirect. In case you really got to blow something up, but you want to hide behind cover while you're doing it. You can replace the twin heavy flamer with twin heavy fusion rifles, twin heavy machine guns, or twin plasma cannons just to go along with whatever your main cannon is. And you can upgrade it with an additional heavy flamer, heavy machine gun, or laser cannon for just more screw you <laughs> towards the enemy. And you can upgrade this tank with double time, making him a tank commander, giving him the ability to order stuff around to move it around the board. And then you can give him strider and stealth through a dozer blade or camo netting, and you can strap a hunter missile on it just for more anti-tank. This, whenever people think of the Human Defense Force, this is what they think of. Little tiny men running around, big heavy tanks running around. 
So this will be kind of the focal point of your army. If you want to bring tanks, this is going to be where you want to start. Then we go from big heavy stuff to a light walker. I don't know why. That's the way the lists are written. I just go in the order that they come. 160 points, quality 4, defensive 2, fear of 1, toughness 6. Two attacks at AP 1 from Stomp. And then two shots, AP 1, blast 3, reliable at 12 inches from a rapid heavy flamethrower. You can take off a heavy flamethrower and give it a heavy machine gun, missile launcher, plasma cannon, laser cannon, auto cannon, or a rapid laser machine gun. Again, this is all with whatever you want it to do. These are all different anti-infantry, anti-heavy infantry, anti-tank, anti anti-light anti stuff. Blowing stuff up with blast, it's whatever you want it to be. You can give it a scout ability with forward observer. You can strap a hunter missile to it, and you can give it a heavy frame, which gives it protected, which means it's minus one AP to damage coming in, and you can give it camo netting for stealth. As far as, point, as, far as this unit goes, it's a pretty cheap unit as far as armored vehicles go. It has the utility to do whatever you want it to do. So if you take one of these, it's never a bad option. Then if battle tanks weren't enough, we come to the heavy battle tank. 455 points, quality 4, defensive 2, fast, impact 6, and toughness 15. It comes stock with twin light battle cannons for 2 shots at 30 inches, AP 2 and blast of 3. A light gatling gun, 4 shots at 18 inches, and a fusion array... Two shots at 12 inches, AP4, deadly three. You can replace the light battle cannon with a oppression cannon. One shot at 36 inches, AP4, deadly three, and an auto cannon strapped to it. Three shots at 36 with AP2. You can replace the light Gatling gun with a pulverizer gun. One shot at 24, blast three and AP3. You can replace the fusion array with a heavy machine gun array for six shots at AP1, 30 inch range. And why not? You can strap a heavy machine gun to the top three shots at 30 inches at AP-1. We're getting into crazy territory here with these weapons. This tank looks like it's designed to have the option to go after different types of units at once. It's got AP, and then it's got hide shot, no AP weapons. You can put lots of guns on this thing to fire more shots. It's up to you. It has lots of weapons, but it's nowhere near what our next unit is. The Super Heavy Battle Tank. Now I have first-hand knowledge on how ridiculous this thing can be. I'll post a little thing where you can see the video where it almost single-handedly took out an entire army of Titans on its own. It had a little bit of help from all the rest of the units running around the bottom of it, but let's be honest, it did most of the work. 890 points to start with, quality four, defensive two. Fast, impact 12, toughness 24. It starts off with a twin heavy machine gun for six shots at 30 inches and AP1. A siege mortar, two shots at 24 inches, AP3, blast three and indirect. And a hell cannon, four shots, 24 inches, AP1, blast three and lock on. Then we get into the really cool stuff. A doom cannon. I'll let you guess what that's for. Six shots at AP3 with deadly three. The Hammer Cannon, six shots, blast three, AP1 with indirect. The Twin Lord Cannon, 18 shots, AP1 with lock on, in case you think about running away from it. Shadow Cannon, three shots at AP4 with deadly six. A Sword Cannon, three shots, blast six, AP4. An Auto Cannon, a Siege Mortar, and a Bane Cannon, the Bane Cannon, four shots at 30 inches, blast three with AP2. Or a Storm Cannon, three shots, blast six, AP4, indirect. This thing deletes entire squads. It eats other vehicles. If you want to, you can strap on a Storm Rifle and a Heavy Machine Gun. You can give it up to four different sponsons, and every sponson you put on it gives it an additional six toughness. So if you put four of these on there, it gives it an additional 24 toughness, bringing it, bringing it up to toughness 48. In case you want to be completely unnecessarily something. I don't even know the word for that. One sponson has a heavy flamer, one shot at 12 inches, AP1 blast three and reliable, and a laser cannon. One shot at AP3, deadly three, 36 inch range. The other sponson 
has a laser cannon, one shot AP3, deadly three at 36, and a heavy machine gun, three shots AP1 at 30 inches. And oh, by the way, you can upgrade it with transport of 21. Oh, good Lord, this tank is insanity. The hilarious thing is, for my human defense force, the only true tank I own is a super heavy tank. Why? Because I saw it and my orc brain took over. If you take one of these, you're playing at a point level where you don't need to watch beginner videos like this. You know what you're doing. So day two of recording, somehow I missed the artillery pieces. Good Lord, how did I miss those? The field artillery, 190 points. Quality four, defensive two, entrenched, slow, toughness six. Three attacks with the artillery crew, and it comes with a rocket battery. Three attacks at 24 inches with blast three and indirect. You can replace the rocket battery with a field cannon for two shots at 30 inches, blast three, AP two, and the heavy laser cannon, one shot at 36, AP three, and deadly six. While this does seem to have a whole lot of firepower packed into it, it's nothing that a weapon team squad is not able to pull off. And with a weapon team squad, you're able to buff six weapons at once instead of just one of these. So I'd rather go for a weapon team squad over the field artillery. Then there is the support vehicle, 250 points, quality four, defensive two, entrenched, impact six, and toughness six. It comes with a heavy flamer, one shot at 12 inches, AP one with blast three and reliable, and a twin shard mortar, two shots at 24 inches with blast three, indirect, and rending. You can upgrade it with a dozer blade for strider and a camo net for stealth. You can replace the twin shard mortar with an eagle rocket, two shots at 30 inches, AP2, blast three and indirect. A twin AA cannon, six shots at 30 inches, AP3 and lock on. A ballistic missile, one shot at 36 inches, AP4, blast 12, indirect, limited, and reliable. Or an artillery cannon, three shots at 36, blast three, indirect with AP1. And finally, you can replace that heavy flamer with a heavy machine gun. There's some interesting choices here. The one that jumps out as most interesting to me is the ballistic missile. Indirect, limited, reliable, blast 12 and AP4. It's one shot, but it is a very devastating shot. Whenever you want to take a whole squad and erase it off the board. The only downside to this is the limiting of the blast rule itself. You can only hit every model in the unit once. With blast 12, you're going to want to shoot into very large groups of infantry, and those are only going to come in tens or 20s and the stuff that comes in 20s i think ap4 is kind of lost on that so this is going to be one weapon that i'm going to deem absolutely overkill because it's not going to be able to use all of its rules at once and where you can only shoot at one time a game it's kind of a downside to it the artillery cannon just being the big old barrel on tracks three shots at blast three indirect with ap1 if you're just looking to hammer stuff, this is probably going to be your best choice, but again, it's also your most expensive choice. Twin AA cannon, if you just want to put more shots down range, it does have the lock-on ability, but that, but that does not mean that it has to shoot at aircraft. Those barrels can just point towards the ground and just start d -d 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 into anything on the field. The Eagle rocket seems to be a cheaper version of the artillery cannon. It has better AP and one less shot but it is 50 points cheaper. So I think for me, for the points, I would go with the Eagle Rocket over top of everything else. Those are gonna be able to hide, lob two shots over any intervening terrain, landing in the middle of something, doing up to six hits with the two blast attacks. And the AP-2 is a pretty good middle ground there. You could go for the twin AA cannon if you feel like you're gonna need the AP-3 but it does not have indirect, so you're going to have to expose this vehicle to enemy fire. And with only toughness six, maybe, maybe it survives one turn, maybe. But with six AP3 shots, unless your army is just full of other terror things that the enemy's worried about, I would just go with Eagle Rocket and hide these guys. Then we have two different types of aircraft with the army. First off is the light gunship. 260 points, quality 4, defensive 2, aircraft rule, of course, toughness 6, and transport 11. Comes with a laser machine gun for 3 shots at AP3 at 30 inches, and twin rocket pods, 2 shots, 24 inches with blast 3. You can give it a door gunner, which is pretty much just equipping it with a heavy machine gun, 
three shots, AP1 at 30 inches. And you replace the laser machine gun with a laser cannon, one shot AP3 Deadly 3 at 36 inches. And replace the twin rocket pods with strike missiles, one shot AP3 Deadly 6 and lock on. With the Transport 11, this opens up a few different things with the Army. Mostly, what I would use this for is if I wanted to theme my army around an airborne detachment. Why? Because it's cool. And honestly, the light gunship is not that much more than the light APCs. And it's got cooler weapons. I'll let you decide on that one. Then the last unit we're going to go over is the heavy gunship. 375 points, quality 4, defensive 2, aircraft rule, toughness 9, transport 6. So it's still transport, just for smaller squads. It comes with a Fury Missile Rack, two shots, 36 inch range with blast of three, and twin laser cannons, two shots to 36 inches with AP three and deadly three. You can also upgrade it with a door gunner for an extra heavy machine gun, and you can replace the Fury Missiles with additional twin laser cannons. So you can tool this thing up to shoot off four laser cannons a turn. This does become a pretty effective anti-tank aircraft, but with the aircraft rule meaning that you have to line up the shots through your movement phase, and you're only gonna get it maximum three turns in a game, I'd rather spend that 375 points on a battle tank. If you're going for an airborne division, your heavy gunship would turn into your battle tank. You know me, I'm all about theme over function. If it's cool, go with it. Now that we've talked about all the cool stuff that this army can take, I'm going to explain my army that's going to hit the board. It is not your typical human defense force army because I decided to theme my army when I first started 3D printing and did a human defense force army as a penal legion. The story to the army is that these guys all got caught doing something they shouldn't have and they all got thrown into the meat grinder. And on top of that, I found some files that were based on the Arcadian division of Imperial Guard, which are the Imperial Guardsmen from 2nd Edition 40K. I even do have some 2nd Edition models in there. See if you can pick them out. I'll show up on the screen where I got these models from. They're pretty cheap as far as files go. I think four of them complete the entire set of the army as far as the infantry go. And he hasn't had that many downloads with how long it's been up there. So if you wanna have some old school looking stuff, with new school scaling and the ability for it to go together easily, go check them out. So with that, on to the game. Welcome out to the garage, everybody. Here we have the Penal Legion of the Human Defense Force. And in this list, we have three squads of 20 conscripts, all being led by a company leader that have hold the line. We have one five-man veteran squad with as much plasma as we could pack into it. We have a unit of stormtroopers, again, with all the plasma we could pack in and two heavy guns. These are the old Arbites models. A unit of ogres, even though they have the slab shields on them, there's going to be no upgrades. They have the rapid grenade launchers. And in the back, we have two combined weapon teams, one armed with mortars, the other armed with the heavy laser cannons. And we have a storm leader attached to the heavy laser cannons with the take aim ability. And the Penal Legion will be taking on the Mechanical Cult from last week's video. So this is our board for today. There are six objectives on the field and a load of line of sight blocking terrain. These two shooting armies are going to have to maneuver around to get line of sight on people to give them the DACA. And our mission, we are going to use the mission cards again today. Each team is going to have five cards in their hand. You're going to be able to score as many cards as you can at the end of your turn, and you're also going to be able to discard one card. At the beginning of each turn, draw as many cards as you need to get your hand back up to five. 
So for the Human Defense Force, their cards are Executioner, Take No Prisoners, Outflank, Hold Four, and Seize Four. For the Machine Cult, their cards are Hold Six, Hold One, Seize Three, Hold Three, and Seize Two. So for our Machine Cult deployment, we have our Shock Priests inside of an APC, five Rangers. We have the Breachers and Destroyers in the middle. And we have five Rangers, the Dragoon on the far side. And then we have our Infiltrators. Those guys are on the bottom floor. I just put them up there so I didn't have to curl my arm. For the Human Defense Force, we have Conscripts, Stormtroopers, Veteran Squad, Ogres, Conscripts, Mortar Teams, Conscripts, and the other weapon team with the lasers with the Storm Captain. Both teams are deployed, and the Machine Cult won the roll-off to go first. On the very far edge of the board, the Dragoon is going to activate first and go fast up to the corner of that ruin. First activation for the Human Defense Force, the Mortar Heavy Weapon teams are going to fire into the destroyers over there. Their 30 inch range is gonna get it. So we pull out our handy dandy dice box, six of them shooting, they're gonna hit on a five. Only one hit, but they are blast three. No AP, saving on a four. Two wounds go through. That destroyer squad, it's a slow unit, so it can only go four inches. They are gonna go here to this corner and they are going to see what they can see downrange. Oop, they're going to they're gonna stay on objective four. So with their 30-inch range on their plasma cannons, they are going to be able to go right through and hit this conscript squad right there. Three shots with the plasma cannons, looking for a four. We got one. It's blast three, so that turns into three hits. Saving on a six because it's AP four and two dead conscripts. So these conscripts don't have to worry about morale until they lose 11 models in the squad. So what they're going to do... They are just gonna double time it out in front of everybody else because their commissars telling them go that way. Now the conscripts are not gonna shoot them. Our rangers over here that are currently hiding from the camera, they're gonna end up right here on the objective. In the center, another wave of conscripts will march forth and they can go here to the edge. Very much securing objective three. And on this side of the board, another hidden ranger squad is going to pop out and say hi. They're just going to barely touch this objective. The ogre squad is going to come around the edge of the building to right there. And it was just a matter of time until someone got close enough to catch it in the face. Our infiltrator squad is going to charge down into the ogres. Remember, they're on the first floor. I just put them up here so I could see them. Because as, we, because as we've seen in the past, sometimes I forget models exist. So they have 20 inch charge plus their three inch little wiggle to get everything to combat. They definitely had enough movement to get all the way around the back so that everyone gets to attack. So if you watched the last How to Play, you know how this squad works. It had 24 attacks. They have Furious and Rending. So they're going to hit on a three. Sixes go right through their armor and cause additional hits. With this many dice. So we have four sixes. That'll be four additional hits. Plus these go right through the armor. They only save on a six. So it'll be four wounds. That's going to be one ogre down because they are only toughness three. And the rest, save on a four. So unfortunately for the big guys, that was way too many wounds they got through. They're all going to go away. And the squad of infiltrators get three inches of wiggle room where they murdered the squad they were in combat with. So they wiggled to try to get out of the line of sight of all this stuff over here. Unfortunately, they couldn't do it entirely. We're going to activate the conscripts, only moving six. And then we're going to shoot them. There, after everyone's moved, line of sight is not going to be a problem. So the company leader has a ballistic skill of four, and he hits. The infiltrators save on a four, 
a pass. And for the 20 additional shots, the conscripts hit on a six. Seven hits is pretty impressive for the conscripts. Saving on the four. All that shooting only caused one wound, so bloop. Almost out of activations, the machine cult is going to move their landing craft. It is fast, so it's going to go eight to here. And it's going to fire on the conscripts. So the landing craft has two phosphor machine guns hitting on a three. And the conscripts save on a five. So they lose four. Now on the Penal Legion turn, the Storm Leader is going to activate Take Aim on the laser cannons and fire at the landing craft. Normally they would only hit on a 5, but with the Take Aim, they're going to hit on a 4. And with the AP3, the landing craft is going to save on a 5. Ooh, all three. This is the first APC we've had blow up on camera. So what happens when an APC blows up? All the troops inside have to take a dangerous terrain check and they're automatically pinned when they come out. So a dangerous terrain check means that you've got to roll a dice for each of the models and on a one, they automatically take a wound. So there are 10 priests inside and none of them are gonna die. So we got 10 dudes to get to come out to play. They have to be placed within six inches of the destroyed vehicle. And then the vehicle is removed. Now those priests are stunned. They don't want to be stunned. So what they're going to do is they are going to activate next and they are going to recover, removing the stunned effect. Now over here, these veterans are going to go six inches and then they are going to fire all of their plasma goodness and their regular guns into the squad of infiltrators. We have two plasma rifles and one pistol hitting on a four. And the infiltrators save on a six. So there goes two. And then the regular rifles hit on a four. And save on a four. So there go two more of the infiltrators. Uh, uh, if I can unhook them. Here we go. Last activation for the machine cult, the breachers. Just going to go four inches this way. Their character can't really see anybody because he's tucked in too deep. So they are just going to shoot and completely overkill the conscripts. We got three shots hitting on a four, two hits, and complete obliteration saving on a six. Oh, one of the conscripts end up living. Now the machine cult done. Our last activation for the human defense force is going to be the stormtroopers. They're going to do a six inch lateral move here, and then they are going to pour their fire into the infiltrators. So four shots of plasma hitting on a four. Three hits, saving on a six. So there's two. Between the heavy drum guns and the rest of the rifles, it's 12 more shots hitting on a four. The AP-1 would reduce their armor down to a five, but since they are in cover for most of the squad, they're going to save on a four. There's another four. So with all that shooting, that takes out another six of the infiltrators. And they are going to need to take a morale test. So at quality four, they pass a morale test out of four. And they're good. So the machine cult at the end of turn number one, they're able to score one point from C's two. Because they're on six, but they weren't there at the beginning of the round. And one and three are on the opposite side of the board. They're not going to discard anything yet. So their new objective is cut them down. For the Human Defense Force, they were able to score two victory points from outflank because there's no enemy within 12 of the center of the battlefield. The terrain kind of makes that hard to happen, but that's the way the cards came out, so they get two points there. They're also going to get rid of the card, take no prisoners, because they are not a melee army and their one unit that could melee has died. So their cards that they pick up is Seize 5, and seize one. First activation of turn two goes to the machine cult and they are going to charge their tickle finger priests into the conscripts. 
Though these priests have Furious and their weapons have Taser, so for every six that we roll, it's an additional two hits. They hit on a three to start with. So after adding everything up, it is 26 hits. Saving on a five. The priests are not playing around as they ended up doing 20 wounds, which is enough to wipe out the squad of conscripts. I feel like I called them cultists earlier, but nope, they are conscripts. And then with their three inch wiggle, they're gonna be standing on objective number five. First activation from the Human Defense Force. Over here, they realize they're, they are in a charge or be charged situation. So the conscripts are gonna charge into the Dragoon. We'll come back after I figure out numbers. So after all the movement is over with, we're able to get 15 of the conscripts close enough. The company leader was not able to get in there. So 15 attacks hitting on a six. So only two hits, saving on a two. Oh, it takes one wound. So the Dragoon fighting back two attacks with AP one from its stomp one hit. One dead conscript. And then it's Taser Lance. Three hits, one of them is a six, so it's gonna get its taser rule, so four hits total. And three more dead conscripts. Conscripts lost combat, but because the leader's there with the highest quality in the unit, we're gonna test on his on a four up. Even if it was just the conscripts, they passed. Now they're gonna do their one inch backup, but that dragoon is pretty much stuck right there. Nothing more he could do on his turn, but just try to charge his way out of this mess. Seeing the conscripts leaving, leaving the juicy squad over here. Stormtroopers open. The infiltrators are going to charge in. So what's left of the infiltrators get six attacks, hitting on a three. Sixes are furious. Ooh, that's only going to come to three hits. One of those is rending. Ah, as I missed the box. So that'll be one dead stormtrooper. The other two save on a four. Two dead stormtroopers. So that will be two of them gone, but they're gonna get to attack back. Eight attacks, hitting on a four. Saving on a four. They're gonna cause two wounds. That'll be one infiltrator and then one on the, one on the sect leader. So stormtroopers win combat, sect leader, sect leader needs to take a morale test. It fails, he takes off running. Not so big and scary now, are you? Over here in the far corner, the storm leader and his squad of laser guns are going to fire. He's going to tell the mortar squad to shoot better and give them plus one to hit. The laser is going to fire at the shock priest. Our company man has a gun. We're going to start with that. That's a hit. That's a save. And then the laser cannons. Hitting on a five. We're going to end up... Ooh. Well, those two zoomed in there. We're going to end up with three hits. Priests are going to save on a six. Failed all three. Now the priests have regeneration. Since these are damage three, we have to roll three at a time. But because they don't spill over, we have to roll three at a time. So the first priest, he's going to die. Second priest, he's going to live. And third priest... He's really going to die. That was enough to wreck a tank, and it only killed two of you? Woo! Now for the Machine Cult's turn, our squad of Breachers or Devastators. I can never remember them until I look. The ones with the plasma cannons. They're going to move out to here. And they're going to fire their plasma cannons into the laser dudes hiding behind the corner there. So it's going to be three shots hitting off four. Oh, absolutely nothing. Didn't this happen in the last game too? Our stormtrooper buddies, our current jailers of all of our conscripts are going to move over here to objective one and fire over on the Dragoon. So the Dragoon already has stealth. So it's going to be minus one to hit. So our four plasma shots hitting out of five. Nothing. 
And since we lost two, we are down to 10 shots at AP1 with all of the heavy rifles, the drum rifle, all the big stuff. Hitting out of five. Four hits at AP1, saving on the three, as I missed the box. So it saves all four. So it's these guys under the breachers. They are gonna go their four inches, since they are slow. Poke out right there, and they're gonna shoot at the stormtroopers. We're gonna check the spell list first. He's gonna use steel body on his own squad, trying to give them plus one defense. He's got four points right now since he didn't cast anything last turn. This turn, he's going to spend three on steel body. Normally, the spell power is a two, so that's gonna be plus one. He needs a three, and it fails. So on to shooting. The leader has two shots with his radiation gun, hitting on a three. Two hits, saving on a four. Okay, one save, but since it is a radiation gun, this one turns into two wounds. And then the big guns hitting on a four. Two hits, saving on a six. Two more, gone. So it'll be a total of four dead stormtroopers. Yeah, they are then reduced down enough. They need to take a morale test. And they fail. They are pinned. For this activation, these conscripts on objective three are going to move six inches this way and fire on those shock priests. So the squad leader, one shot, hitting on a four. Fails. Everybody else hitting on a six. So the shock priests are going to save on a four. Failed two. And then they have regeneration. Failed two. So pulls off two of those. That's just as many as this squad here. Are you guys going to stand for that? Machine cult turn. These rangers over here are going to move to get into range of the stormtroopers. Rangers are going to hit on a four. We got four hits, saving on a four. So we've got two, we got three failed, and one of them with radiation is going to be a fourth one. That's going to be enough to wipe out that stormtrooper squad. Uh-oh, boys. Prisoner's gonna riot. This squad of veterans down here, we are gonna move up six. And they are also gonna fire over there at shock priests. So we got two rifles hitting on a four. Ooh, two hits. Saving on a four. Saved them both. So we got two plasma rifles hitting on a four. One hit. Saving on a six. As I missed the box. Fails. Regeneration of five. Fails. That will take them down to half strength. Time for a morale test. They pass. Time for the last activation of the Human Defense Force. Our mortar teams over here are going to go bloop and fire at those rangers over on objective number six. So this squad was given take aim by the storm commander. So they are going to hit on four, six shots. Five shots hit. With blast three, that turns into 15 hits, saving on a four. That's going to be enough to wipe out the Rangers. Last activation for turn two. This guy, he hasn't activated yet, so he's just going to thud. I mean, he doesn't have any other option there. Oh, his regular AP one attack hitting on a six because he already fought in combat this turn. Whiff. And his taser lance, again, same thing, hitting on a six. Oh, one hit. That turns into two. Saving on a six. Two dead conscripts. Now all the conscripts are able to swarm into combat. It's going to be 18 attacks total hitting on a six. So that's three hits saving on a two. No wounds go through. Conscripts need a morale test. They're going to fail. Then this guy, plow, make sure they pass. Time to add up some points for the Machine Cult. They were able to score cut them down. Only one victory point, though, because they were able to kill one, but not three. They're also going to get rid of hold three because being that it's going to be turn three, it's going to be hard to get there to begin with. They are going to pick up shifting strategy where we got to roll a dice for number four and seize number two. The Human Defense Force had even worse luck. They did have Seize 1, but because the Stormtroopers died, 
they lost that objective. So what they're going to do is they're going to get rid of hold four for the same reason. It is behind cover in the enemy deployment zone. They can't get to it. And they're going to pick up total dominance. I don't see that coming up anytime soon. First activation of turn number three goes to the human defense force. And these idiots are going to charge into the shock priests. So we end up with 16 conscripts and the leader in combat. So the leader hitting on a four fails. Our 16 conscripts on a six. We got four hits saving on a four. One fail, but that priest has regeneration. Still fails. Four priests are left, which means it's eight attacks hitting on a three. They all hit with one six which is gonna give us one additional hit. Saving out of five. Yee. So the conscripts lose six. Time to take a morale test. Highest leadership in the squad is a four. And they pass. This squad over here, because of the objective cards that came up, they're gonna back, back up onto objective number four. And then fire their plasma cannons at those conscripts. Three shots hitting on a four. We got two hits. That turns into six hits, saving on a six. There'll be five more dead conscripts. That takes them below halftime for another morale test. And they pass. This leader is going to tell the mortars again to take aim. And then him and his last cannons are going to fire at the priests. On the rifle shot, hit on a four. Oh, it hits. Saving on a four. Fails. Regeneration. Oh, it passes. Six heavy laser cannons hitting on a five. We got two hits. Saving on a six. One fail. The damage three, regeneration. That's going to be one dead priest. And because they're already below half, morale test failed. The squad of destroyers here is going to keep their toe on objective number two. And fire at those conscripts. Three shots hitting on a four. One hit. Saving on a six. That's a really dead conscript. Next activation, our veteran squad on three are going to fire into the shock priests. Two rifles on a four. One hit. Save on a five. Or save on a four. I mean, saves anyways. Two plasmas on a four. One hit. Saving on a six. Regeneration. One more dead priest. They're already pinned, so they automatically fail their morale test, but they're not going to run off the board from gunshots. You got to do it in melee. So they are just continuously pinned. And speaking of that, on their activation, they are going to hold an unpin. The mortar squad is going to fire at the destroyers hiding over there. Six shots hitting on a four. We only ended up with two hits. So a blast three that turns into six hits, saving on a four. They lose four wounds. Unfortunately, that means that their guy who was holding the objective is going to go down. Plus this one is gonna go down, leaving just the one to take a morale test. Morale test needs a four, passes. The conscript squad is going to be something sneaky, and they're going to move back six to put their foot on one, and they're going to fire at the Dragoon. Let me show you how that ends up. There we go, kind of conga liney, but they're going to block that Dragoon from taking objective one this direction. So the leader shot hitting on a four. It hits. Saving on a two. Oh, takes one wound. Rest of the squad hitting on a six. Nothing. So it is down to five wounds, and it is going to enact its revenge. Bang! On those conscripts. It's two kicking attacks hitting on a three. One hit. Saving on a six. One dead conscript. It's taser lance attacks hitting on a three. Got one six, which means that turns into three hits. Saving on a six. Only one more dead conscript. The conscripts are able to condense down into combat, so the leader on four hits. Saving on a two. Fails. Oh, there's another wound. Nine attacks the conscripts on a six. Two hits. Saving on a two. 
So it only ends up taking one wound total. So the conscripts lose combat. And they pass morale. What's with these guys rolling sixes for morale? Last activation this turn. These rangers, they're going to go out six. They're eventually going to try to make their way to objective number one. But they're going to make a pit stop here to fire on those conscripts. Five shots hitting on a four. Two hits. Saving out of five. One fail. There are still 13 conscripts left, so they don't need to take a morale test. So on turn number three, the machines were able to score one point for seize number two. And they're just going to go ahead and get rid of seize number three. Their new cards are area dominance to control any three objectives. And charge, destroy an enemy unit in melee. The Human Defense Force were able to score one point with C's one from that conscript's little cheeky foot on there. And they're going to get rid of total dominance because that's just not going to be in the cards today. Their new cards are Hold 2 and Terrify. First activation of turn four, the final turn. Our commander in this squad is going to tell the mortars to shoot better for one to hit, plus one to hit. And he is going to take his squad. They are going to move onto objective five here. And then they're going to fire at those shock priests. So the captain's shot hits, fails, but passes regeneration. And the heavy lasers on a five. Two hits. Saving on a six. Both failed. Time for the three wound regeneration on the first one. He's gone. The second one. He is gone as well. Compared to the last game, these guys hung on forever. Time for the machines to go. This ranger squad is going to charge into the conscripts on objective one. Five attacks hitting on a four. We got two hits. Fives to save. Ooh, two dead conscripts. Conscripts are going to be fighting back the squad leader. He hits. Saving on a four. Fail. That's one dead ranger. And then the ten other conscripts. Hitting on a six. We got two hits. Saving on a four. Two more dead rangers. That actually means that the rangers have to take a morale test. Which they pass. The conscripts decide they're going to circle the wagons here. Like that, and they are going to shoot those two rangers. Squad leader hits. Passes the armor. The rest of the conscripts. Not a single hit. These guys are going to jostle around a bit. But then, because he is not slow, this guy is going to go nine inch. You're going to go six inches to put him within nine of those conscripts. He's going to cast Machine Terror, which is strength three. He didn't cast last turn. He got two from this turn, and he's got one left over. He's going to throw all five points into this spell. So that means it casts on a two, and he still fails. Why do I try to cast spells? Oh, my good Lord. <sighs> okay, so shooting his two shots, two hits. One save, one dead conscript. The three overkill cannons. Two hits. And one more dead conscript. That puts them in need of morale test territory. And they pass. Mortar squad here is going to fire at that little guy hiding over there. Because they got nothing else in range. Six shots with the take aim hitting on a four. Ooh, we got Three hits. Saving out of four. Takes one wound. So he's down to a point where he needs a morale test. And he passes. Hail Mary from the middle. The veteran squad is going to fire at those rangers right there. Two rifles. One hit. And a save. Two plasma. One hit. And one fail. Meaning they need to take a morale test. And they are stunned. You can't hold that objective no more. Wait. 
Wait a minute, I, I'm, I'm needling myself. I've lost my mind. This guy over here, he is gonna run back eight inches, double timing it for a fat boy. Just get on objective number four. Then the conscript squad is gonna go six. And they're gonna try to be heroes to take that guy out. The squad leader, eight of them can see. The leader is gonna hit. Pass the armor save. And the rest of the conscripts, one hit. Saves out of four. Fails. Which means he's down to one wound. Morale test. And he fails. With that, we go down one wound. You are now pinned. And you technically don't hold that objective. Last activation of the game. This guy. Boop. Gonna charge right there. I'm not sure if this could swing the game, but it's close enough. It might. Two attacks hitting on a three. Two hits. Saving on a six. Two dead conscripts. Four attacks with its taser lance on a three. One hit. One dead conscript. The conscripts are all fatigued to six attacks hitting on a six. We got two hits. Saving on a two. Ooh, takes a wound. But the conscripts still lose combat. And they pass. The machine cult this turn scored. Nothing. If it wasn't for the courageous conscripts charging out, they would have scored. Shifting strategy. But they got nothing. For the Human Defense Force, they were able to score C's five, and believe it or not, they they were eight. Believe it or not, they were able to score Terrify, causing two units to fail morale tests this turn. That leaves us with a final score of three to five for a Human Defense Force win. Hooray! Now, is this an optimized human defense force list? Of course not. But that is part of the beauty of one page rules. You could take a list that is just pure trash, like an army based on conscripts, and still pull off a win. I know this is going to be a long video. But now that I'm being more clinical and doing more explanations and suggestions in the beginning, I could make this an additional hour if I really wanted to. But no one wants to sit through a three hour video. Well, maybe some people do if they're painting, but we're going to cut it off here. This week, we're going to have the next episode in our fantasy campaign. Remember to send in your results on the Discord server, or you can email me at warbossfits at gmail.com. You can just send me emails about whatever at warbossfits at gmail.com. I think that's enough for me. I'm going to go inside. It's, it's dropped below freezing now out here. Remember to like and subscribe. Show all your friends. Introduce them to the fun that is OPR Gaming. Show them this game to where Army List doesn't really seem to matter all that much. You are able to have a balanced game in OPR, and it's a whole lot of fun doing it. So remember, guys, it's just a game. Don't take it too seriously, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.